Rebel with the Cause, Mark Twain's Hidden Memoirs, Chapter 22, Guilty of Being Lucky, 1858. Editor's Notes In Life on the Mississippi, Twain recounted the night he and Henry had their fateful conversation and the accident itself. The night before the Pennsylvania left, Henry and I sat chatting on a freight pile on the levee till midnight. The subject of the chat, mainly, was one which I think we had not exploited before. Steamboat disasters. One was then on its way to us, little as we suspected it. The water which was to make the steam which should cause it was washing past some point fifteen hundred miles up the river while we talked. But it would arrive at the right time and the right place. We doubted if persons not clothed with authority were of much use in cases of disaster and attendant panic. Still, they might be of some use. So we decided that if a disaster ever fell within our experience, we would at least stick to the boat and give such minor service as chance might throw in the way. Henry remembered this afterward, when the disaster came and acted accordingly. When Mr. Wood and Henry fell in the water, they struck out for shore, which was only a few hundred yards away. But Henry presently said he believed he was not hurt. What an unaccountable error. And therefore would swim back to the boat and help save the wounded. So they parted and Henry returned. Twain had arrived in the wee hours of the morning at the makeshift hospital which had been set up at the Memphis Exchange. A local reporter recorded what he saw. We witnessed one of the most affecting scenes at the exchange yesterday that has ever been seen. The brother of Mr. Henry Clemens, second clerk of the Pennsylvania, arrived in the city yesterday afternoon on the steamer A.T. Lacey. He hurried to the exchange to see his brother, and on approaching the bedside of the wounded man, his feelings so much overcame him, at the scalded and emaciated form before him, that he sunk to the floor, overpowered. There was scarcely a dry eye in the house. The poor sufferer shed tears at the sight. This brother had been pilot on the Pennsylvania, but fortunately for him had remained in New Orleans when the boat started up. To one observer, Twain appeared to be almost crazed with grief. So mentally distraught was he, in fact, that the Memphis authorities insisted that a man accompany him as he took the coffin to St. Louis. In a letter to his sister-in-law, Orion's wife, Twain wrote about Henry's death. Oh, God, this is hard to bear. I, even I, have humbled myself to the ground and prayed as never man prayed before that the great God might let this cup pass from me, that he would strike me to the earth, but spare my brother, that he would pour out the fullness of his just wrath upon my wicked head, but have mercy upon that unoffending boy. The horrors of three days have swept over me. They have blasted my youth and left me an old man before my time. Molly, there are gray hairs in my head tonight. For forty-eight hours I labored at the bedside of my poor burned and bruised but uncomplaining brother and then the star of my hope went out and left me in the gloom of despair. Men take me by the hand and congratulate me and call me lucky, because I was not on the Pennsylvania when she blew up. 
May God forgive them, for they know not what they say. Molly, you do not understand why I was not on that boat, I will tell you. I left St. Louis on her, but on the way down, Mr. Brown, the pilot that was killed by the explosion, poor fellow, quarreled with Henry without cause while I was steering. Henry started out of the pilot house. Brown jumped up and collared him, turned him halfway around and struck him in the face. And him nearly six feet high struck my little brother. I was wild from that moment. I left the boat to steer herself and avenged the insult. And the captain said I was right that he would discharge Brown in New Orleans if he could get another pilot, and would do it in St. Louis anyhow. Of course, both of us could not return to St. Louis on the same boat. No pilot could be found, and the captain sent me to the A.T. Lacey with orders to her captain to bring me to St. Louis. Had another pilot been found, poor Brown would have been the lucky man. As for the fight with Brown, Twain relates an expanded version of that event in the same book, Life on the Mississippi, in the following chapter, 19. The mention of Tom Quartz is an allusion to a fictional cat from chapter LX. I, that's 61 to you and me, of Roughing It.